Okay, I'm going to do a little presentation on, well, it's going to be little, but coats of arms. <coughs> coats of arms. And i um, doing this on behalf of the deceased, the now deceased, uh, William Richard, William Richard Drake, FSA, who died probably somewhere around the turn of the century, or maybe before, I don't know. <clears throat> but he writes a couple things here that have, uh, his books I, um, are very good and uh, they've made their way onto the internet I have excerpts from a couple of books and he kind of goes into some discussion on um, how coats of arms are handled and then I'll maybe <laughs> if there's anything to add I'll add some more <coughs> you know, basically this is just what he said, I'm going to go ahead and read it and bore you to death. Okay, so, now this is uh, an excerpt from um, Fascalicis Mervinesis. This is actually available on Google Books. <coughs> the other excerpt I'm going to read is a little more interesting, but not as um, instructive about the College of Arms, or informational about the College of Arms, at least as it was Oh, uh, <laughs> over 120 years ago, um, he, uh, I'm reading some excerpts about the Chichester family. <coughs> I'll, I'll be reading some excerpts about the Chichester family. So anyway, this is what he, this is what he had to say, and this is back in. I'm pretty sure he would have dated it. He was a big time attorney back then, uh, back in 1873. So this is what he says. It's been upward of 25 years since I commenced collecting information relative to the Mervins. Uh, Fascalicis Mervinesis, if I even said that right, <coughs> is about the Mervin family. My object at the time was limited to the occupation of pedigree of a branch which, in the first half of the 17th century, settled in Devonshire. Okay, maybe I should get into them. <coughs> Let's see if I get to where he gets to his, um, okay, okay. My determination would, ha how it would however, have been of small avail, I mean, it's, you know, didn't do much, would have done much. My project, in all probability, would have remained unaccomplished had it not been for the aid courteously and liberally afforded by Sir Robert Woods, FSA, <clears throat> I'm not sure what FSA means, by the way. Garter. 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 Uh, can you read that? <laughs> Garter. He puts it in italics. Garter. Not only were the archives of the College of Arms thrown open to me, but on every point in which I sought information, Sir Albert's ready and valuable assistance was at hand. I am the more desirous to record this circumstance because a somewhat general impression prevails that, except upon payment of heavy fees, no information can be attained from the College of Arms. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, this was over, this was 120 years ago, and I've never been to the College of Arms myself. I'm just talking and joking a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> he says, those, and there were many, who entertain the opinion appear to overlook the distinction between literary inquiries and business investigations, a distinction which, according to my experience, has never lost sight of the officers of the college, who are always ready to acknowledge the claim of the former to the facilities, it's literary, uh, which it would be idle to suppose could be accorded to the latter. <coughs> oh, uh, try to pause. Yeah, okay, I'll pause a little bit. I'm not quite sure what he means by business reasons, it almost seems to imply that um, being listed as the head of the family <coughs> in the landed gentry or um, peerage um, is a business thing. Uh, he, it could also mean, I, I'm not familiar at all with what people do at the time, maybe people were selling pedigrees, I, I'm not sure. By pedigrees, we're not talking about dogs or, <coughs> or anything, I mean, 
he uses pedigree all through his documentation as is the word to use uh, Americans don't really favor up to that kind of verbiage um, <clears throat> that's that's what he usually uses I'm used to, to using it so just understand me I'm not hedonistic in any way <laughs> I, I, I couldn't belong to any coat armor anything I don't think anyway Okay, so the College of Arms is a corporation <coughs> incorporated by Litter's patent. Uh, Richard the First, or the first year of Richard the Third, not maintained and is often supposed at the expense of the state and supported by fees paid by those who ask for, seek the professional assistance of its members. <coughs> now, so what he's saying here basically is even though the College, International College of Arms, at least as of the writing of this, this is, again, over 120 years old, 130 years old, um, <coughs> his point is, even though the College of Arms has a state function, it's only supported by the fees that are paid for research. Okay. The archives consists of the returns made by heralds as the results of their visitations. I'll discuss that. I'll discuss that and, and as a side comment, I'll discuss that in a bit. Second pedigrees from the time from time to time registered after due investigation in the college at the insistence at the instance of individuals who desire to have their genealogies recorded. Third official documents uh, documents connected with the grant or title of titles and honors, including coats of arms, funeral certificate. Funeral certificates, royal licenses for change of name, etc., etc. <coughs> and fourth, numerous and valuable manuscripts collections made from time to time by members of the college and either bequeathed to or purchased by the corporation. Of the above, the Herald's visitations are acknowledged as public records inasmuch as having been taken virtue by virtue of commissions issued under the authority of the Crown. As you know, the King of the United Kingdom. We're talking about the College of Arms of the United Kingdom, and they are admitted as evidence in courts of law. They would not, however, be so recognized unless produced by those having the rightful legal custody of them. For example, they would not be admitted if they form part of the miscellaneous collection of the manuscripts such that are found at the British Museum. <coughs> it's kind of like in accounting or or in auditing. We 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 know that segregation of duties is important. Uh, the record keeping of cash is a separate, if it's kept as a separate function from the custody of the cash, and also as a separate function is the authority to spend that cash, then um, we know there's a lower chance that theft will occur because it'll be likely to be caught. Okay. And he says, hence it follows that if they were, and some contend they ought to be, handed over to the National Library, we would lose much of their practical value. Now, Drake, by the way, was a lawyer, or a barrister at the time. It should, however, be noted that the British Museum and other public libraries contain copies of many of the early, earlier visitations, and in some few instances, the original notebooks of the Herald, signed by the parties from whom their information was derived, so that in those cases, genealogical inquiries need be at no loss. If they merely seek information as to the contents without resorting to their actual documents that can be adduced as legal evidence. <coughs> so even here, uh, Drake has a concept of um, record quality. <coughs> of course, um, records that aren't in the hands of custodians uh, could be tampered, theoretically, and that's probably why it can't be legal evidence. Uh, those in the hands of the cult, you know, I'm not reading from him right now, and you know those from the that are in the hands of the College of Arms, you know they're they're under custody by people who have the duty to make sure they don't get altered and they don't necessarily have any stake in the way that the the pedigrees read, I guess except if their own pedigrees are in there. That is not <laughs> discussed by Drake here, but I I think that's really a minor issue. <clears throat> As regards the remainder of the manuscripts in the college, 
There is no more reason they should be made accessible without payment of fees. 